So being in prison, and like you said, you had a phone, so you had access to social media. Mm-hmm. And just seeing, I guess, everybody using the blueprint that you kind of laid down. Like, how did that feel for you? I mean, for me, um, I mean, I'm going to trip no pressure. Like, that's, that's, that's really what it is. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like me, me seeing more going on in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, or really like well, why I ain't have a problem with it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like the, what 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 helped me kind of cope with the fact that I wasn't in the game and I couldn't really put my bid in was just like mm-hmm. playing it. Like I didn't want to. I couldn't compete with them niggas as far as most because mm-hmm. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm in there. Right. But like a lot of times when you when you having a lot of motion, you don't got time mm-hmm. to plan. You don't got time to really like mastermind something or do the constructive things. Mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of what I'm doing now. Like it originate from like like just me being in there and like playing and like knowing like how I was doing stuff and like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like the type of books that I was reading and all the type of circles that I was in when I was in the feds because you, mm-hmm. you cut into different from like different walks of life. Right. So I got turned on to a lot of game and I incorporated it into my hustle. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So like I felt like that was like the number one thing that kind of like gave me peace about not being able to do those things. Mm-hmm was just focusing on like, you know, some of the things that I felt like they wasn't doing out there. Like, mm-hmm. because I know niggas don't have time. Right. I know niggas don't have access to the, the caliber of people that I do, now that I'm in this situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so, I know you talk about planning and all that, but that was just like one hell of a fall from grace, right? Yeah. And I know that's gonna affect anybody mentally. Mm-hmm. So, on them days where it was just like rough, like what got you through mentally because you got to think you didn't tell nobody you kept it real with a lot of people and a lot of people turned on you and mm-hmm. now you got to see them same people having all the motion in the world like nothing happened mm-hmm. so mentally like what got you through the full five years that you had to serve well um i had a um i feel like i had a pretty decent support system um my family ties ain't really that strong but it's just like mm-hmm. um i had just, just, just from me being in the street making my moves, I had like association with people that like kept a bridge the whole time I was in there. Mm-hmm. So like I always had somebody to talk to. I always had somebody to like kind of like you know just keep me like I don't know like when you when you behind the wall and you get like like and you still got people that you can that pick up the phone or like people still send pictures, people still come see you. Mm-hmm. It kind of like give you the validation that you're looking for because you'll go to question and like. If you did enough when you was out there, mm-hmm. like if you really left your mark, so mm-hmm. um, I never questioned like whether or not I like uh, like did my thing while I was out there, or if I mm-hmm. met anything to anybody while I was in there, and then like I said, like I was productive while I was in there, cause mm-hmm. it's like I'm the type of person like I like I need to feel like I'm leveling up, you right. know what I'm saying? So it's like when I'm running across certain literature and like I'm reading it, and like um, it could be something that's informative. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like, like I said, like I read all these books about marketing and all these books about like um, uh, social media marketing mm-hmm. and, and like like starting the clothing line and starting the record label. I read law books about the music industry and mm-hmm. like uh, intellectual properties and all everything that I'm dealing with now. Yeah, I was like preparing for it then. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like important for me to feel like I'm leveling up. I was reading the right books. I was uh, I wrote a lot of music. I got a lot of material. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was on my workout shit, I was on my diet shit, I was mm-hmm. on my networking shit, I plugged in with a lot of solid people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we out there on land, like making it do what it do. So for me, it was a combination of like the support system mm-hmm. and then like keeping my head in the game as far as like still being productive and like still mm-hmm. like finding ways to feel like I was leveling up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we bypass all that, we get through that. We get through this big five year, six year really hurdle. And it's time for you to come home. It's time for you to snap. Like, leading up to your release, how did you think you was going to execute the music? Or what did you want to execute first? Was it clothes first, then music? Like, what was your main focus leading up to coming home? Because I know it had to be some anticipation, some anxiety about how you wanted to come when you first landed. But, um, I mean, I had, like, like, the whole time. That's another thing that I feel like, I was doing like probably mm-hmm. a lot of niggas doing that lot stuff. It was like I was always visualizing my return. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about my first day out, my first day in. Mm-hmm. 
and like I wanted to be like big because I felt mm -hmm. like I felt like the mark that I left and then like not only that but like what what my situation could become potentially mm -hmm. if um if I came home and, and certain things was lined up it was going it was going to take flight mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so I had kind of like bigger expectations for my return than it, it actually was mm -hmm. because like I said like my support system I had what I had but it's just mm -hmm. like they weren't the type of people you feel me like it wasn't it wasn't like I was coming home to a lot of money or coming home right. to like niggas who was getting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um when I was out there I was kinda like the breadwinner. I was kinda like the nigga that put shit together. Right. So it's like when I fell, uh, a lot of shit fell apart. Mm -hmm. So when I first came home, it wasn't really like it wasn't really lit like that. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like I really had to play the cut because I was on I was at the halfway house. Mm -hmm. And after that I was on the anchor monitor. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really step like I wanted to and I right. kind of like used that time to be more constructive mm -hmm. But it was just like a nigga was playing from so far behind that I, I feel like I'm still You know what I'm saying? Just like 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 I said like I don't feel like um Like I didn't come home to niggas who had a lot of money and I didn't come home mm -hmm. to people that was like necessarily into the things that I was into Right. So I'm still like kind of like Looking at what's going on as far as like social media, cause you know the ground turned up. Yeah. You got the TikTok shit going everything on, is like now. everything different now. Like the clubs I used to go to don't swing no more. Mm -hmm. Most of the bitches ain't open no more. No, they the brands that <laughs> a nigga used to rock or like the yeah. people that you used to have to know. So the way I had it before, I was in the streets so much and feeling like it was a part of me. Mm -hmm. So I knew how I just knew how to put shit together in a way where it was gonna resonate. Mm -hmm. So like what I find myself doing now is still getting familiar with what it mean to really be like a rapper or like a nigga that's having motion in 2022. Mm -hmm. Cause it's different now. Mm -hmm. So as far as like my expectations for my return, like I had them way up though. Mm -hmm. And then like at some point I kind of like had a reality check and realized like it's really on me. I really got to construct. I really got to like game plan and get this shit together to where my return can meet my standards. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the process of doing that now. Okay, so you come home and coming home from a federal case as a rapper, right? How important do you think paperwork and having good paperwork, never having told on nobody, like how important do you think that is to being a rapper today, especially in Florida? I feel like it depends on what type of rapper you is or like what type of nigga you is, like what mm -hmm. type of circles you in. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that shit don't move out. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, uh, just because of, like the type of rapper that I am, and like the fan base that I got, and like the niggas mm -hmm. that I link with, as far as like the niggas who I'm, who I politic with, and who I, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like the niggas who I link up with when it's time to make a move, mm -hmm. we all on the same type of time. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd be a motherfucking lie if I felt if I were to say that every nigga, like, really stand on a G code and then come home and he take off. Just mm -hmm. like, like it's a lot of niggas who like don't nobody care about that type of shit. It yeah. just depend on what circles you in and what lane, like like how you want to approach it. Just like it's niggas who fold and they still get show love, mm -hmm. but it's like them niggas don't fuck with the niggas that I fuck with. Them niggas right. don't do what I do. Right. So as far as that go, I feel like it just depend on what you align yourself with. Mm -hmm. I know for me, like uh, me taking my lick and I telling on nobody, me standing on business. It um it got a lot to do with why why I can move how I move and do what I'm doing now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So do you feel like when people if they catch a fair case and they do decide to cooperate, do you feel like they could still come home and snap the way that you snap? Do you think it's possible at all? I mean, especially shit. in this Florida climate that we in right now, this it, musical climate. It just depends. From what I see, I feel like everybody, I feel like everybody move off of self interest. Mm -hmm. It ain't really like no love in the streets. So mm -hmm. it's like if you if you have a way of benefiting somebody, like even if you told, mm -hmm. like niggas are quick to be like, well he ain't tell on me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like it, they, they it's like niggas who feel like okay, like say a nigga told on me, then I'm the one who's supposed to like see about that. Mm -hmm. You know feel me? Like I'm the one who's supposed to like get get at the nigga that did that to me. And as far as they concerned, like he ain't mm -hmm. tell on me. So if he got if he got an opportunity, if the nigga got some work for a good number, if a nigga got if they wanna book me and put me on that stage, if a nigga mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like if a nigga have a, some type of cloud or some type of motion and a nigga mm -hmm. feel like he can come up from it, mm -hmm. it's a good number of niggas who won't fuck with it. Yeah. And like it's a lot of niggas who won't, 
but it's enough niggas who will mm -hmm. to where like I feel like them niggas can still do their thing. They can still do them. Yo. Okay. Well, you're not one of them. So no. you did your big one. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell nobody. And you really stood for something as a man. And I really feel like that's why a lot of people today rock with you as hard as they rock with you. So yeah. It definitely take it further. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But it's like... Mm. So being a full-fledged rapper now, you like... You a real rapper now. Yeah. You got a jury. You with, <laughs> you with other rappers running around here. You like a real rapper now. Mm -hmm. So And you got finesse all the way back. So how do you feel like, I guess, being an artist and having this super successful business, like how do you feel like that sets you apart from the other wave of rappers in Florida right now? Um. Well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like... um. I feel like, like you said, like I, I did my time, I came home. And like mm -hmm. being that I did the time and I did it the right way, mm -hmm. I came home the right way. There's a lot of people who, I already knew it was going to be a lot of people who were looking for ways to support me. Mm -hmm. I knew like whatever it was that I decided to be on, it was going to get behind it. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of times when it comes to music, it's hard to monetize that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Niggas yeah. might like, nigga, I play your song a million times for you make five stars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Versus like the clothing line, like, Okay, it's like I put a clover line out there. A lot of people probably fuck with it off the script, but they actually like how a nigga coming. Mm -hmm. But it's like my face behind it too, so it's like niggas see see that I did that time and I'm trying to get something going. Mm -hmm. They don't got a problem breaking bread. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that was like another kind of like plus with the clover line. I feel like that's something that gave me an advantage because a nigga can't really, if he supports your music, he can't really give you a hundred, two, three hundred dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? For your music, he would have to stream your shit. I don't even know how many times. Mm -hmm. But like, a nigga can buy a t-shirt. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A nigga can buy a pair of joggers, a nigga can buy a hat. So, I feel like the advantage that I got as far as like, me coming home and having that support, like by me putting a clothing line out there, mm -hmm. it gave it like a, a convenient way for niggas to really, you know what I'm saying, kind of show that, that they, they fuck with me and what I stand for. Mm -hmm. yeah.